Thank you, and welcome to the uh, second half of the show, uh, where we are. Two guests are uh, Dave Kerman and uh, Agnes Pretty. Uh, what we're going to do is find out what it's like to run for public office, and what happens after uh, if you uh, run and don't win. Some of you end up as TV hosts. Uh, <laughs> like, <laughs> so, uh, without any further ado, I'd like to introduce Agnes uh, Pretty, who's a real estate broker in the town of Newmarket, and Dave Kerman, an educator who has been on town council for 18 years. Dave, uh, you've been fighting uh, council uh, elections for the last 18 years. Uh, last November uh, 30th was your last day in office. What have you done since then? Well, well, John, once, once the election w was over, there was a real wrap-up period. You know, I was still on council until the 30th of November, and then you go through the, uh, the Christmas holidays, and uh, there are a lot of functions that I still had to attend. But, uh, John, I went right back to my profession that I'd always maintained as a teacher, and uh, that certainly kept me very busy. Um, I'm taking up uh, some of the things I put down for those 18 years, John. I'm looking forward to the uh, spring where I can get back to tennis uh -huh. and uh, maybe play some golf, and uh, you look after your health and you spend uh, some time with your family. But the teaching, John, is uh, keeping me busy because there's a real uh, reform movement out there. And uh, you have to keep very you active. You teach in a high school? Or I a teach uh, for the York Region Board of Education in an adult setting at Jefferson. And uh, there are some you know, great changes in the wind. And uh, I work for a very, very progressive board. Uh, and uh, they are heavily into the co-op education program where um, students go out and uh, they work on the job. And uh, they get their training from that particular employer. So. I'm very proud of the program that York Region offers, John. It's a real hands-on type of education in that field. Now, Agnes, you uh, ran for public office uh, your first time out, yeah. right? Uh, that was uh, five months ago this month. <laughs> Matter of fact, it's almost today. <laughs> so what have you been doing since uh, that time? I know you're always very busy anyway, but what's I, been happening? Yes, since? I am busy. Well, it's like they've said, you know, you have a wind-down time. And, uh, I mean, I hear people talking about going on diets. <laughs> I never went on a diet. I ran for mayor and lost 26 pounds. <laughs> you did? Oh, yeah. And in the process, lost the weight. But I think I got slightly run down myself, and I ended up with that flu bug. And that really knocked me up for quite a bit. Then I decided, well, I'd go skating, and that gave me a cast on my arm. <laughs> then I decided, <laughs> oh, yeah, since on Boxing Day. And uh, then I had always decided that I was going back to work. Went back to work, and the company that I was with closed down a few weeks ago. So I had to rearrange who I was going to be working with. So, But you put your business in a, in a trust or something when you were running what for What I office, did right? was I closed the company down to the public. Um, like I still own the corporation, mm -hmm. but I placed my license elsewhere because at no point in time did I ever want anybody to say there was a conflict of interest. But after the election, I thought about it and I thought, eh, I can work for somebody else. I don't have a problem. And being a real estate broker, you know, you have many, many options. But anyway, so I ended up with Coldwell Banker. So I've been very busy with that, very, very busy. I've also been busy, of course, with. Seneca College. I'm busy with Red Cross. I still deal with the terminal cancer patients. I still deal with the terminal AIDS patients. I've also been taking courses in raising children. So and you do child a lot abuse. of volunteer work, I know. Oh, you tremendous amount. Yeah. And who, but I enjoy that. Who do you do most of the, the volunteers? Or one sort of a. Uh, Everybody. Everyone. Right across, well, I'm chairman of uh, Blood for Your Region for Red Cross, so I'm very involved in that. The other thing that I, I did that I really enjoyed, um, I taught a seminar for Hobie. Um, Hobie. What's remember Hugh O'Brien, uh, who played Wyatt Earp? On, of on television. Of yes. All of the older folks yes. we were using. You, you are now that, dating yeah. me, Agnes. Well, <laughs> we, we all know. Yeah. About 27, 28 years ago, he started an organization for young people. And it's, um, it started in the States. It's now worldwide fascinating and to sit in a room and this was a there was seminars for three days 
with 186 young people between the age of 15 and 18, believe me, was absolutely exhilarating. What does Hobo do? Hobie, they, Hobie. They're basically, they're into um, very positive thought. The kids who look at it and say, I have a career, I want a career. They also look at worldwide to see what is happening. Um, and these kids travel, but everything is done on a volunteer basis. So that was an absolute pleasure. That was pure joy for me to work on that. Dave, you have um, uh, been around town a long time, that's for sure, 18 years on council, but based on your extensive political background in, in Newmarket, do you plan to capitalize on that in any way, go to writing or uh, uh, talking about it? Or? John, uh, starting a political history of the new market. <laughs> I uh, always interwove the teaching w with the politics, and uh, you know you do a lot of uh, volunteer work along the way. Um, I put together uh, some thoughts because I'm teaching adults, and I'm teaching a lot of new immigrant adults, and uh, it's called accessing the Canadian system. But it's not specifically confined to new market, John. It's it's more or less to. Uh, to assist people who are coming into this country and to to familiarize them with how the process works. Did and, you write uh, the curriculum for this or design uh, it? Uh, partly I did, John, and it, it's part of the course I teach called Personal Life Management. And uh, how do you manage your life, you know, when you come into a new system? And I must say that Agnes has been a guest speaker uh, several times at the school where I teach. She's come down mm -hmm. to uh, to teach about, uh, you know, the positive image and self-reinforcement and uh, and what's out there in the business world for for, uh, for the immigrant and for women and for all people. So, uh, but I think uh, that's important. Yeah. You know that people see this. Yeah. Well, you're an immigrant yourself, right? Yeah, I came to Canada 31 years ago yeah. this year. So, like Dave asked me a couple of times to go in and be a guest speaker, and I think it was important. And I I, I think you're. Uh, people get quite a fair bit out oh, of it. Oh, they did, Agnes. To see somebody who did get off the boat, who had nobody else to turn to, um, you learned how to make your support system. You learn to look at yourself and say, I am a nice person. I am a good person. I have something to offer. And, and there's another thing I think this past election has proved. There is a tremendous wealth, a culture, especially south of the you look side road. Would you agree? Very, very definitely. I mean, it's uh, amazing. I don't. Other towns out of the it is <laughs> unbelievable. There's life beyond Newmarket, John. <laughs> the, the, the culture <laughs> that has come into Newmarket, and I think this is where I'm really starting to see this wonderful Canadian mosaic. We always discuss it, but when you actually see it, these, it is just unbelievable to sit back and watch. Well, this, uh, the course, is it night school, this course? No, I, uh, the, the school operates really from about 8 in the morning, John, to 5, uh, five in the evening, and it's for adults from right across York Region, uh, and they come from, uh, from Markham, from Vaughan, from uh, Keswick, from Newmarket, from Aurora, from uh, Wichert, Stovall, all the municipalities, the nine municipalities. Uh, this uh, building, the Jefferson Adult Center, services all of York Region, John, and uh, I'll tell you, when we start registration, we're, we're filled to capacity. If you're ever down in that area, you'll notice the parking lot is uh, completely filled. And uh, What would be one of the major things that you'd <coughs> want to get across to someone like this, as, as you say, coming into a new system? Uh, what, would, what would be uh, something you'd want them to know? Uh, that's the, the I, I would say, John, the, um, the political system the economic system, the social sy system, the whole gamut uh, of how uh, our, our society functions, John, and they're, they're so receptive and so appreciative of, uh, of this kind of approach. Mm -hmm. And Agnes, I'm certainly going to invite you back down again, and, uh, and, 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 and of course I'm going to have John Cole come. John Cole has also been down to, to this building, and uh, He's always been supportive of that kind of thing, and uh, I know, Agnes, mm -hmm. you'll, you'll come down again. But it's, some of these people who are in your class came from a very different system. In fact, maybe even no system. Of course. Or, or, or you're, a very you're, you're uh, correct. controlled system. You're mm -hmm. correct. Yeah. They come from Cambodia, they come from Vietnam, they come from Nicaragua, they come from Somalia, they come from Ethiopia. 
Uh, they come from all parts of Europe, from Poland, from Hungary, from mm -hmm. you name it, John, from uh, Taiwan, from the people's... Especially communist countries. Yeah, the really former uh, communist yeah. countries. Uh, it's, it's certainly uh, the whole gambit of my life, John, being involved uh, with New Market politically and, and, and teaching for uh, the York Region Board in that adult setting has enriched my life. It's uh, given me a new perspective on well, life. Well, like in your case, you had 18 years of town council in yes. New Market. Uh, meetings every two weeks, uh, <laughs> committees, uh, budgets. I could never get a hold of you any time. What, what is it like to all of a sudden you don't have to go to council every two have weeks. Have a life. <laughs> so, <laughs> but life the, beyond uh, council. You know, the, the funny thing is, John, is, you know, as Agnes said, you know, once I wasn't on council, it didn't stop. Like, I was, I was still involved with the 87s, which is a marvelous hockey organization to be involved with. And they went all the way, almost uh, all the way. They, they okay. certainly did. And uh, the tournament they held at Christmas was exciting. And I'm involved with Jim Knox with the ADAPT organization, the Association mm -hmm. for Differently Able People Together. And uh, the conservation dinner, which is coming up a week this Friday, and uh, your tickets are sold out. They're sold out, uh, <laughs> uh, and, that, and that's they're, they're right. doing the conservation. conservation uh, it, it, uh, it raises money, John. There's a project we're involved in, and we're, we're going to dedicate it to Basil Knowles, who was the uh, the uh, the uh, administrator, really, for the Lake Simcoe Region Conservation Authority. It's the the acreage, which is called the Bailey property, they're planting trees in there and they're preserving wetlands. So they raise money for the preservation of wetlands and the restocking of the Scanlon uh, um, lake area. So life doesn't end. And then uh, you get <laughs> phone calls to be involved, you know, with the Canada, and then there's the uh, the cleanup day that's coming on May the 6th. So. John, you with your hip rubber boots uh, well, as you, uh, <laughs> you know, John, you, you still don't stop and you keep going, but periodically now you have the time to sit back and you reflect upon it. And it's, it's, it's marvelous to actually have some time periodically just to, to put the fire on. As you're right, John, it wasn't just one meeting a week or two. It was, you were out every night. Some, some months it was 28 nights out of 31 that you were out. And, you begin also, John, to realize the heavy toll that it takes sometimes on your wife, you know, to, to be at home and your family. And uh, this has given me time to readjust to that. And uh, I've always uh, spent a lot of time with them, but now it's uh, some more time, and that's, that's, that's rewarding. Well, I know in your case, Agnes, I, I think it's a six-week uh, election oh. you know, when you're in normally. But you were campaigning more or less for a long time. How, how did... Now that you're at the end, after all of a sudden, the day after, and there's, there's no more, nothing to do, no more knocking on doors, how did you feel? You know, did that, was that, as a, is the pressure, was it, is it really a lot? Do you know, I actually, John, do you know when the pressure stopped for me? The minute the polls closed, because I can remember a friend of mine, uh, one of the doctors in town, he had stopped by the office. I says, when do these polls close? He says, where are you going? I says, I'm going to the hospital to see a patient. This is Agnes. I said, please, I've had enough. I said, this is it. Let me out here. And as soon as those polls closed, I walked out the door. For me, it was over. It was finished. There was no more I could do. It was up to the people how they had decided. And whatever they had decided, that was it. But you had two months or two and a half months off in the public eye. Mm -hmm. Right, and there's always this okay. campus. Just there's a lot of activity going on. No, wait a minute, though, John. Bear in mind that for many, many years, I was in the public eye. I mean, as a real estate broker with mm -hmm. my own company, and also bear in mind, have been through the acute leukemia, and been told you've only got two to three weeks to live. Surviving that threw me into the public eye. So. There was a part of me that was very much adjusted to the public eye. Mm -hmm. Granted, I had taken about three and a half years where I had sat back. Um, so it, it took me a couple of weeks to get right into the swing of things. But you, uh, again, there was three, it was a three-way race. Mm -hmm. And I, I know some people will bring it up, but there, were, there was the gender factor. There was, you were the only female in the race. Yeah. Do you know if anyone has ever, has there been any other females ever run in for a council in Newmar or in the mayor in Newmarket? Yeah. I don't think so. Oh, uh, Do yes, uh, Doris Blair. How many years uh, ago was that? Ran against uh, Raymond Twinney. Uh, I would say it was 19, uh, Must have been 1980, 1980 that she ran. 
So you weren't the first uh, female. And, and there was another lady by the name of Wilson who also ran against Mar the Raymond in another election as well. Yeah, but I think she basically threw her name into the hat. No, but she? but uh, but Doris Blair was a real contender. That was, uh, I, I believe, the year was 1980, John, that Doris ran. I Is think I recall, right? and she was also a counselor. A counselor. Oh, absolutely. That's, that's right. And then and Doris is. Uh, is uh, still in Newmarket and, and still the caring, kind, giving person she always was. She's uh, a volunteer on everything, uh, just a marvelous woman. And she's still mm -hmm. uh, in Newmarket? Oh, oh yes, yeah. absolutely, oh, yes. absolutely. She's very uh, active with oh. women's auxiliary at... Um, she's a Silver Cross Lee? mother. She yes. was out uh, when you have the uh, Vets Parade and the mm -hmm. Legion, this yes. type of thing. Uh, Doris and that was one is very cold there. day. Yeah. Always I, there. I remember after the election, you were mentioning something about a, a travel. Uh, <laughs> it was I don't know, Middle East or Far East or somewhere. Do you, do you have any, still have those travel plans? Did you go? Uh, no. I, well, uh, John, I, I, I haven't had the time <laughs> yet. I mean, you're... <laughs> you know, John, well, you did I talk about it. Well, <laughs> certainly, John, and uh, this summer we're certainly going to implement that. The, the thing, you know, that I'm even more cognizant of now is that, you know, uh, my parents are, are still alive. They're 84 and 80, and my wife's parents are still alive, and they live in Germany. Um, they're 89 and 87. So, uh, you know, the best, best of plans may go astray because, you know, you, you care for your, your parents. And uh, the traveling that I do take will be close to Europe um, uh, so that... Uh, if they need to access me, John, they can get hold of me and we can be there in a very short period of time. So you're not going to the Middle East? Then? Oh, uh, I think I <laughs> certainly am, John. <laughs> I am going to the Middle East, but you know, uh, Israel is very close to, uh, to Europe. Uh, I certainly have always wanted to see Israel and uh, our plans are, are loose, but we're progressing toward them. I'm in the process of renewing my passport, so uh, I hope to be out there, but it's very close that uh, if I had to be in Europe, I, I would be there. I know you ha you're an avid, as you mentioned, avid <laughs> tennis uh, player. Do you plan to uh, pick up on the game and or, or your golf? Uh? I am looking forward to that immensely, John. In fact, the other day I was taking out some of my fishing rods uh, and, and cleaning them. Uh, and uh, tomorrow I'm taking my golf clubs out and uh, I'm polishing them up. And uh, <laughs> I hope to see Dennis Hollingsworth down at the uh, Newmarket Community Tennis Club. The nets are up, so are they? I, if it's warm enough tomorrow, John, uh, I'll the be down still there. Up? <laughs> the bubble's still up, but courts four, four, four five, and six are, are open. And uh, I, I hope to get down there and get back into that game. So uh, there's uh, something that, that came up, and I was just going to ask you on a political vein, and I know you've spent <laughs> a lot of time in, in council. But there was a, a something about this GA, GTA thing that came up and talked, discussing merging certain communities in Newmarket into, uh, in, in the region, such as Aurora and Newmarket together. How do you feel about that? John, being progressive, looking to the future, we're going to have to do something. When you, when you really take logic, uh, the York Region School Board administers a budget of uh, over $500 million. I think their budget is going to come in at around $514 million. And it's administered by approximately 20 trustees. In the region of York alone, uh, there are almost 100 politicians. And 100 politicians yes. in, in the region of York? Yes. 20 to administer a budget of over 500 million and over 100 politicians in the region of York, including the region of York itself, uh, administering much less money, John. We're going to have to change things. You, you, you just, you're going to have to streamline it, John. We're moving into the 21st century, and it's going to have to happen. We, we did it before when we became the region of New York back in 1970, and smaller, municip smaller areas like Jefferson or, or Elgin Mills or uh, Thornhill or Pottageville or Unionville or whatever it was, they merged into Markham or they merged into Richmond yeah, Hill, mm -hmm. Oak Ridges, and so forth. But we can't go on, John, doing the things we used to do before. Uh, the world is changing, John, and, and other people have gone by us, so we're going to have to look at tailoring, because every time you take a tax dollar away from someone, you're taking away his freedom, John. He doesn't have the freedom to dispose of that dollar the way he, he wants to. The government is now mandating that. And already the, the ordinary Canadian is being taxed over 50% of what he earns. He works now from the 1st of January until the middle of July. And uh, it's got to stop, John. We, we have to take some dr dramatic steps. 
and we need probably fewer politicians. Well, here uh, we have a caller. Let's find out what it is. Uh, go ahead, Carl. You're on the air. I would like to ask the, both the guests there what they think of the library, and, and do they really think that there is enough parking in that area for the Main Street and the uh, parking out for the library? The, the, the New Market Library? Yes. Okay, thank you. Agnes? Agnes? You live down in that, in that yes. area? Yes, yeah. and I'll Business I, in that area. I'm going to say something, and it may not be popular. I honestly believe that the new mayor and council have got enough headaches without feeling that Agnes Pretty is standing over the shoulder passing comment. I think that would be tremendously unfair. So, Dave, do you have any comments on what uh, Well, declared? Agnes and I, and, and I, and I uh, sat in the room there. You know, anything that I can do for the town of Newmark to be of assistance, mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to do that. But they have a plan now that they're going to go ahead with. and. Uh, uh, I'm totally behind the, the mayor and council, and uh, I wish them well in their projects, John. Uh, a few years ago, I had my ideas, but uh, they, they never materialized, so they're going to go ahead with that, and uh, I wish them well, and uh, I, I commend them, John. Are you still involved in the community? I know you say you are uh, through oh. these other areas, but are you still involved with the 87s? And very, very. I, as a matter of fact, John, we had a meeting last night that went from 7.30 until... Uh, to 10.30 and we have a, a banquet coming up for the boys on May the 7th that's hosted. Very, very active, John. It, it really hasn't stopped. The other day I got a phone call from Danny Arnold and the car club to come out and help with their, uh, their Wreck-A-Rama and their Pancake uh, Festival and uh, How does heavily it look for involved. the 87s for next year? Absolutely great. Uh, great executive. Uh, yeah. Guys like Jim Wells and Charlie McCowan and, uh, and uh, Dieter Schmidt and Jerry Erdl and, and the whole executive have done a fantastic job, and, and the boys in particular. It was a marvelous team. It was, uh, they could have gone either way, and uh, I'm sorry we're not playing. Uh, <laughs> well, I was pleased to see that they're at the, uh, complex. the 20 Rec Complex. Yeah. Yes, it's, uh, it's nice to see them up. They were drawing, what, 1,200 or 1,500? Uh, well, in the, in the playoff, the Sunday night I was on the gate, John, there were 3,700 people there. I know I could hardly get in. Yeah. I bought a ticket early. Yeah. It was sold out. Yeah. It was sold out. Mm -hmm. A couple of the games were sold out. And, and hey, that's uh, great marketing because they put quality. It was really fine hockey. And that's what the 87s are committed to. I, I, know, I know in your case, you're talking about new Canadians. I know, learn the system if you come from Scotland, is it? <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, as far as Canada goes, I know you mentioned this during the the, uh, the election, but you seem to have strong feelings I about. I have very strong. Now this feelings. is important because of things that are happening currently. You know the yeah. the, the uh, separatists in Quebec and, and I so do on. not believe, John, that Quebec will ever separate. I lived in Quebec for a few years when I came. I believe in one Canada. I honestly and truthfully feel that we are now at the point where the mosaic is starting to take shape. Our children are coming up, they might marry somebody that's background is totally different. God knows what our grandchildren all, all look like, but for whatever, you know, this is the way it's going to be. And this is Canada. Um, as a, no, I am very, very, very committed to Canada. I know there's one question that probably most of people ask you, but you consider running again. <laughs> Listen, I'm working on Frank Clee's campaign right now. That's enough. Thank you very much. At this point in time, hey, who knows? We could all be dead and buried tomorrow. Dave, would you consider entering oh, public office again? Absolutely, John. I, I will certainly run again in, in 97. And, and just like Agnes is busy in a political campaign, uh, you, you keep active politically. And uh, yeah. I'll, I'll be uh, involved uh, probably on the other side. Uh, and uh, quite frankly, I'll be uh, campaigning for Charles Beer. And, and, <laughs> so it, is, you know? and, and that's what democracy is all about, that's John. That's, what, uh, that's about. Uh, what makes a, a, a fabulous country. And we can all John. sit around the table and talk about it. And, and, you're, and John, you know, traveling the world and you see how what things transpire around the world, Canada's a fabulous country. Mm -hmm. And uh, you come back to that country. Oh, I, I uh, want to thank you. I have to cut you off at this point here, David. I know we could go on forever, but. Thanks very much for coming. I really appreciate you taking the time and talking to us. And, and Agnes, again, uh, good luck you. in your business. Thank and I'd you, like John. To congratulate I, I wanted to say that when, when I came on, John. It's <laughs> always a pleasure. You, uh, you always have that uh, fantastic sparkle in your eye, and I always enjoy being with you. And uh, don't success. forget to tune in two weeks from now when we'll have a special guest. will be uh, uh, Peter Formica from the uh, Aurora Housing Help Line. 
and we hope to have a couple of students on from Newmarket High Schools to talk about some of the issues in that area. If you want to be on the show or you have an idea or you'd like to uh, uh, tell us about some uh, a topic, write to uh, cable, uh, Rogers Cable 10 TV. Let us know. We'll keep in touch. You keep in touch. I'm John Dowson. Thank you for watching and good night.